Hi everyone, it's Jennifer. Today's video focuses on tips for mass producing cards. I will be using the MISTI stamp tool. However, there are lots of tips that will apply even if you do not have this tool. So we're gonna talk about mass producing cards and also how to best use stamps that have the layering where you stamp many things on top of each other to create great stamped images. You can see I did that here for these flowers. These are stamps from Altenew, and I just love the results. Definitely work a little worth the little bit of extra effort it takes to stamp all those layers to create these images. Now I actually filmed this video back in December because I created sets of note cards for my mother and my mother-in-law for Christmas. So I created 60 of these cards all in one afternoon. So it's really fun to make these, and it doesn't take as much time as you would expect using some of the tips I share. Now, although I filmed this back in December, I'm doing the voiceover now, and right now we're doing a remodel in my house. So you'll be hearing some banging in the background. I'm so sorry, but there's really nowhere quiet for me to be in my house. So I apologize in advance for that. And one more thing before we get started. You'll see me do several com color combinations of flowers in this video. I'm gonna jump around between them because I don't wanna make the video too long. However, I will list the exact colors I use for each color combination in the YouTube description and over on my blog, so be sure to check it out. For these cards, I'm going to be using one of my favorite stamp sets of all time, the Altenew Vintage Roses. What's great is that you just follow the guide. You see those little like circles, it looks like pencil lines around some of the images? You stamp these groups together on top of each other to create beautiful layered stamped images. I'm going to be using these in the center that I'm pointing to and stamping those on top of each other to create my roses. And then I'll be doing some of the leaves that you see next to it. I decided to use the MISTI stamping tool because it's a wonderful, helpful tool when you want to do stamp layering. However, keep in mind you could use a regular acrylic block or a stamp press or something like that if you would prefer. But I just wanted to show you how great this tool is here today. I've done other videos with this tool and I'll link to those if you want to see more examples. So this, you use the MISTI tool instead of a stamp positioner or instead of an acrylic block. So I always like to kind of plan out where my stamps are going to go, and that's what you see here on this white piece. I just kind of quickly planned where I want my flower and leaves to be positioned. And that's going to be my guide. So let's go ahead and start with the background of the rose and do that stamping first. So I have my plan piece here up against the bottom left corner of my MISTI stamping tool, and I'm going to pos position the stamp exactly where I want it to be and I'll close the door on it, that panel I just close right over, and it moves the stamp right into where it needs to be. So now it's perfectly positioned for all of my stamping. Now I have a bunch of four and a quarter by five and a half inch white pieces cut here, and these are, I, have, I think I have about 70 of these because I want to end up with 60 nice cards. So I'm inking this up with some Hero Art Shadow Ink, and I'm going to just flip it down and press, and you'll see I have my rows exactly where it needs to be. So that's the first layer of my rows. And I'm gonna go through and do all of the cards, all of the pieces with this stamp before I move on. So this is a great way to mass produce cards so you can make gift card sets like these. So you'll see that you get really quick, you get into a rhythm. You actually don't even need to use that little magnet to hold the paper in place when you do it, it's not a problem. And you just close the door and it stamps it exactly where you need to be. Another great advantage of this stamping tool is that say you ink up your stamp but not completely and you stamp it and you need to fix it, you can just ink it up and stamp it again and fix your mistake because it'll perfectly stamp in the same place. Another thing you can do is what I'm going to do here with the yellow ink. I stamped it once and I decided that was a little too light. I wanted this to be darker. So I'm actually going to ink it up and stamp it again with the same color and that gives me a slightly darker ink color, which I think is fun. It's a great way to get more out of the inks that we have. And here I'll show you comparison. This is with it stamped once, and there it is double stamped right above. You can see there, it gives you a little bit of variation. So I used a variety of dye inks to make these today, but you could use pigment inks or chalk inks, anything you want for these techniques. I also wanted to mention that if you have trouble figuring out how to layer your roses, Altenew has this key on their website, which I'll link to, and it shows you exactly how to go about lining these up. But I promise it's really easy to figure out in real life. So now it's time for our second layer here. So I have the first base layer of rows, and now I'm coming in with the second layer, and I use that key to help me out. So I'm laying it exactly where I want it to be on one of my cards, close the door on it, and then open it back up, and now it's positioned for all of the cards. So I'm taking the ink that is slightly darker and going with that next. I find it easiest to start with the light 
lightest ink and then work my way to the darkest, but you can do it in reverse order if you prefer. So I'm just going through, this is a W plus nine ink that's just beautiful, it's called Sweet Gelato, I just love it. And I'm just gonna stamp that on all of them. And I'll switch it up and do the other colors as I go too, so I don't have to move that stamp position. So I'm actually making all 60 or 70 cards at once and changing the colors as I go along. So I've basically added just one layer of these images and it, look how realistic it's already starting to look. So if you wanted to, you could save time and just do the base layer and one layer on top and you'd have a beautiful rose. But I decided to go ahead and do another layer. So I'm positioning that third layer of the rose. This just adds a little more detail into the darkest areas of the rose. I'm going to position where I want it and close the door on my Misty so that it's stuck where it needs to be. And I'm picking a third ink that is the darkest of the three inks. So I'm using a light, a medium, a dark once again. And I'm going to stamp this. Now you'll notice here I'm actually getting quicker with my stamping. And I stacked like three or four of these white panels in my Misty. So all I have to do is take one off each time I stamp. And the Misty works for that. Even though I've added some layers in there, it still works. So this even saved more time by layering these in here. And all I have to do is stamp and then remove one of the layers. You kind of get in rhythm with this and you end up getting really quick when you're using this Misty tool. So it is at this point that my mind is completely blown with how awesome the stamp set is because look how realistic those roses look. I tell you, I'd, I've never been able to achieve that realistic of a look from stamps before. So I went through and I stamped all of my roses and all of the different colors on all of the white panels and it's now time to add some leaves. Now with the leaves, I did several leaves so it takes a little bit more time but you could save time and make this simpler if you just did a few leaves, but I tend to go overboard. So I have one of my rose panels in my Misty all the way up to the corner, and I'm positioning the leaves where I want them, and I'll just close the door to transfer the stamps to the other side so they're ready to go. Now we are layering the rose with some leaves, so I need to do some masking. So I'm going to temporarily adhere a piece of plastic that I just got off some packaging, something I'm recycling here, and I'm cutting around the edge of the rose, so I'm cutting both layers at once. I'll just use that rose for something else, and I'm just going to use this plastic piece as my mask. Now I'm using plastic for my mask because I want to be able to use it over and over and over for many of these cards, and paper wouldn't hold up very well. I position the plastic piece, plastic mask, right over the rose, and then I have a piece of micropore tape, but you could use washi tape, masking tape, whatever you want, and I'll put the tape onto the mask and just tape it in place. I'm going to keep this tape on here and reuse it for many of these roses. I'm also going to take a black permanent pen and put a mark on my mask because it is see-through and I'm afraid I'll lose it on my desk somewhere. So that just helps me in seeing it. I'm inking up my leaves with the lightest green color and I'll just stamp that right on to my flower and the mask will protect the flower underneath. So I'll go through and do this on all of the roses with that light green ink and with the leaves where, positioned where they are. The mask I can reuse by just carefully moving it from one rose to another. And I found that it was easiest to pick the rose up by the tape and move it from one to another because then I don't get the ink on my fingers. The ink kind of builds up on that plastic mask. You can also wipe that mask off every once in a while just so you don't accidentally transfer some of the ink that's on the mask onto other things. After stamping the first layer of leaves on all the rose panels, it's time for the second layer on the leaves. So I'm following the guide on the stamp set and picking the second layer that matches up with each of the first layer of the leaves. I decided to position these one at a time in my Misty just because I was afraid they would shift as I'm doing it and I didn't want it to take longer. So I just position the second layer where it needs to be and close the door on the Misty to put them all on to the other side ready to go. Now you'll notice that I don't do all of the second layer of leaves at once. That's because they were too close together to fit all in one go. So I'm doing half of the second layers in one time and then I'll come back and do the other half of the second layers after that. You can see here how beneficial it is to have the Misty stamping tool when you're making a bunch of cards for gifts like this or when you want to do stamp layering and get um, images on top of each other exactly positioned. And I do want to mention, I'm not associated with the kind folks who make the Misty tool. I'm just a really big fan. So once I have them all positioned and I have my mask in place, I can go ahead with my second darkest color and stamp that on each of the roses. Again, you'll see some of the leaves aren't getting stamped this time, and I'll come and do those next separately. But I'm going to go ahead and do this on all of my rose panels. You can also see here that I'm getting a little bit faster at handling this mask. I found it was easy to pick it up from the tape and move it where it needs to be, and it doesn't take that long at all. You kind of get a rhythm going. 
So now that I've done all of these, I'm going to go with those last two leaves for that second layer and position those where they need to be inside of my Misty. And then I can go through and stamp all of those other second layers. I wanted to mention again that all of the different inks I used and the color combinations I used are listed over on my blog so you can find out exactly what I did to achieve these different roses. But keep in mind, you can use any inks that you already have. You could use dye or pigment or chalk or a mix of all of those. And keep in mind also, say you don't have a light and a medium and a dark of one color. You could double stamp your second layer to get a little bit darker color. So that's another way to achieve that. Or even for that darkest color, you could instead stamp with like a light gray and it'll pick up some of that other color behind it if you're using a dye ink. So for the last step on the roses is the third layer for the leaves. I've positioned my stamps, I'm inking them up with my darkest color and stamping those. You could skip this third layer because it just adds some fine details, but I really think it makes a big difference. So now that we have all of our roses and all of our leaves completed, it's time to add some sentiments. Since these were for a set of note cards, I wanted a variety of sentiments. So I made a few that said hello, a few that had other greetings so that there could be a good mix. I also used my stamp um, stamping tool, the Misty tool, for this. So I'm positioning some of the greetings exactly where I want it on one of the um, rose panels, and then I'll close the Misty on it to transfer it right into place. I can now go through and ink up the sentiment and stamp it on some of the rose panels that we've created. The nice thing about this Misty tool here is that I can be sure that my sentiment is straight every time because I'm notorious for stamping my sentiments crooked. Another reason I like to make gift card sets is it's an opportunity to use some sentiments that I've been wanting to use. And it's always good to have a mix in those gift card sets. So now there's one last thing that I want to do to this stamped panel. I want to trim this down and die cut it so I get that faux stitched finish around the edge of the white. Now I could have done this die cutting at the beginning and done the stamping right onto the die cut pieces. However, I knew I was going to use a bunch of different sentiments and they were all a different width. So I wanted to make sure that I had them centered each time. I have this die set from Lawn Fawn. This is actually two sets together and it does rectangles with a faux stitched edge. I can look right through that die and position it perfectly around my stamping so that it's nice and centered. And I'm going to do this with all of my rose panels. Now again, I could have done the die cutting at the beginning, but I thought it was better to do the die cutting afterwards so I can make sure everything is centered nicely. I just really love that faux stitched edge. Now, as I mentioned, I tend to go overboard and I was just really wanting to have a diagonal stripe tone on tone on the background of all these note cards. Could save a lot of time by skipping this, but I just, I don't know, I had an itch to do it. So I'm going to use the Misty tool again, but this time with a large cling background stamp. There's actually like a foam insert inside the Misty that covers the whole background. You just take that out and then there's room to use a cling stamp in your Misty. So I have this background stamp. I'm just going to cling right into the door of our Misty. I'm going to take my note card and set it inside the Misty, ink up my stamp with a light gray ink, and then just close the Misty tool right on it. So every time I'm going to position it right about there and close that background stamp on it. The background's bigger than the stamp, so it does. I don't have to worry about having that card in the exact same place every time. I um, went ahead and created these note cards from some of my favorite gray cardstock. It's Silver Fox from Avery L, and I just stamped a soft gray stripe on the background. And because I am a glutton for punishment, I think, I decided to also stamp those little gray hearts kind of scattered in the background. I used several heart images from a Simon Says Stamp heart stamp set that has a bunch of hearts in it. And I just used my Misty to quickly stamp them on all of the white panels before I glued them onto the card. I also added some shimmer to the roses with my Wink of Stella shimmer pen. It just adds a little sparkle that catches the eyes. I put a bunch of these note cards in a mix of colors and sentiments into a plastic box along with some matching envelopes so I could give these as gifts. These plastic boxes are very inexpensive. I'll link to the ones that I use in a great way to give a nice completed gift and I just wrap a ribbon around it and it's ready to go. So I hope that this long video, sorry about that, has lots of tips for you for layering your stamping, mass producing cards to give as gifts, and also some fun ways to use your Misty stamp tool. I have linked below all the supplies that I used and also links to the videos that I mentioned. Or I really encourage you to head over to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com where I have a lot more information for you. 
As always, I appreciate you stopping by and taking some time to spend with me and watching this long video. I hope you'll come back soon and thanks so much for watching.